Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today it's Scrawler Box time again and we are doing the August 2019 Scrawler Box so that means it was mailed out in August. I got it in September, hopefully, because <laughs> I'm planning to put it out in September. Hopefully you're seeing this in September. I don't know what's in it yet. This is an empty box. Let's get into it. I'm going to jump right into reading the card in a minute, but I wanted to mention that the art piece you'll be watching for most of this video is not done in the included sketchbook. I tried and horribly failed a couple of times to draw in the sketchbook with these pens, and although I really do think I'm going to like both the paper and the pens for other things, they really didn't play nicely together for me. I tried to do a colorful mandala inspired by a rose window on Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, cathedral in Italy, and it ended up looking like my toddler colored it in. Not good! <laughs> I blame that 90% on the materials and 10% on how tired I was the night I decided to open the box and film. I couldn't wait, it was here, and Art Snacks Plus was here, and I filmed them both in the same night and I really shouldn't have. <laughs> The piece I ended up doing last minute to have something more appealing to look at is my Rainbow Renaissance rendition of Study of the Hands of an Apostle by Albrecht Durer, and although I'm not doing it on the paper included in this particular box, I am using a sheet of Canaletto Lichia paper from a previous scholar box. On with the card! <laughs> August 2019 Scrawler Box, box number 48, and personally my 16th Scrawler Box, received here on this little rock in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean during the second week of September, coming to you now in the third week of September, probably around the same time that shipping notifications for September Box have gone out. The joys of living in Canada and subscribing to international services. <laughs> the top blurb on the card says, think back to a classical style of art for this box, but Bring it into the 21st century with the latest innovation in ink technology. Use this month's featured art as inspiration for your own colorful interpretation of an artwork from one of the great masters. Our artist chose Michelangelo's David. Who and what will you choose? Scrawler tip. Try blending more than one color at a time to really start experimenting with what these pens can do and the colors you can create. First up for the supplies we have Chameleon Color Blending Fineliners. The newest addition to the Chameleon family was elegantly crafted to incorporate Chameleon Color Blending technology into a fine point Japanese precision 0.3mm metal clad tip. These fine liners have a patented dual ink system with ink in the pen and in the ink cap. To blend colors, all you have to do is switch the cap to another pen, hold vertically for a better transfer, leave it a few seconds, and make vibrant color to color blends. Filled with water based, washable ink that won't bleed through most papers or dry out when left with the cap off for up to two days, six color pens with multiple color combinations. The suggested retail price in pounds is £1.99 each, which works out to £11.94 for the set of six. As usual, I will have all of the prices down below in pounds and converted to Canadian and American dollars. I looked up the actual price of a six-pack of these fine liners, and on Chameleon's own website, their six-packs cost £12.99, so Scholarbox does get us a little bit of a deal. This is also a slightly different color combination than any of their regular retail six packs. At a glance, it's almost the primary color six pack, but we got a gray instead of a purple. I've got more to say about these pens, but let's get through the rest of the card first. Next up, Pilot DR Drawing Pen 05, a technical drawing pen with fast drying, highly water resistant, and light fast black pigment ink. The hard wearing plastic tip is ideal for drawing and sketching. Pilot drawing pens are not just for artists and designers, but for anyone looking for a solid, reliable, fine line pen. The unique pen cap contains a system that circulates the ink in the pen tip while the pen is capped. This prevents the tip from drying out while not in use, so that next time you want to write, the pen will deliver a smooth line from the very start. Suggested retail price is £3.65. We also got a Stedler Lumograph 4H pencil. The Lumograph pencil is highly recognizable with its blue, black, and white library. 
a premium quality tool ideal for all artists with a special lead formulation providing a supreme metallic luster. It is especially break resistant thanks to super bonded 2mm lead. It's easy to erase and easy to sharpen with any quality sharpener. The perfect pencil for some light sketching before adding any line work. Suggested retail price is £1.60. And finally, the Crockbook by Claire Fontaine. The handy and flexible Claire Fontaine Crockbook contains 24 sheets of white 160 GSM BEFC paper stapled onto a 270 GSM Maya card cover embossed with the company's logo. This high quality paper is made in France and has a fine tooth surface that is acid free. The perfect sketchbook companion to the supplies included in this box. Suggested retail price is £3.20. And as I mentioned already, the prompt in this box is Rainbow Renaissance. Did anyone else notice the distinct lack of both eraser and pencil sharpener in this box? I am certainly not complaining since I own enough of both, but it's rare for Scrawlerbox to send us a graphite pencil without its own eraser and not also send an eraser, nor a sharpener. <laughs> By the way, before I get on with my review of these products, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday at minimum, and some weeks I also have bonus videos. I'm an art channel, so most of my videos are time-lapsed art footage like this, either presented as a review or a tutorial, or just rambling story time voiceover, but sometimes I switch things up and do crafts as well. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. I really do appreciate it, and I read every comment, and I do respond to everyone. Did you get this box? What'd you think of it? Alright, so, the chameleon pens. I didn't read the card or the pamphlet that came with the pens right away, so you may have noticed me shining a light into the caps when I noticed how long they are. Much like the color tops on their markers, there is an inkwell and marker nib up there in each of the caps, so that you can use the caps to transfer color onto the pens, rather than doing the straight tip to tip I tested first. Both methods work. Being that these are chameleon products and they work the same way as their markers, I actually assumed it was alcohol ink, so I was surprised when the swatches diluted during my water test. Knowing that they're water-based, obviously I'm no longer surprised, but I am now surprised that they stand up so well to being layered under alcohol ink. They do create gradients and come clean again very nicely, and you can even layer in multiple colors by putting the caps onto the pens one after the other before using the pen and letting the inks flow out again. And of course, since they're just a small 0.3mm fineliner nib, you really don't have to let the color transfer very long at all. You may have noticed me tapping on the caps when I was testing the three-way blend. You don't have to tap on them, I was just pacing out the time I had each cap on the pen, so I was getting the same amount of ink transferred out of each cap. It probably looked a lot more aggressive sped up for the time lapse than it was in real life. Another thing to note, since these are water-based inks, that they will eat up the paper if you're not careful. The red in this set seems to be the worst offender for that. This is an interesting color selection they've given us. Like I said earlier, it's almost their primaries pack, but we got a gray instead of a purple. I'm not complaining about that, I've been wanting a light gray liner for my collection that's smaller than an 05, so that's very welcome. I really like the blue, teal, and pink colors as well. The yellow is very hard to see on white paper, and the red is very dull, brick sort of shade. That's disappointing since red is my favorite color. <laughs> I'd much rather have a vibrant cadmium red than this. They're excellent as fine liners, both for doodling and for line art, but like most pens with tiny nibs, they're absolutely not a good filling in coloring tool. Scrubbing at the page, which you might end up doing by mistake when trying to fill an area with color, will end up eating the page, and overlaps will always be very dark and highly visible. You're never going to get smooth, solid color over large areas with these pens. In the future, I will stick to using them as fine liners and not as markers. I also wanted to note that Chameleon advises storing these pens flat. 
That's because if you store them vertically caps up, eventually you'll deplete the inkwell in the cap, and if you store them caps down, the ink will run from the pen body inkwell into the cap inkwell. That's how you're meant to recharge the cap if you do lots of blending, but it's not something you want the pens doing for days on end while not in use. That, combined with the fact that they're much longer than most fineliner pens, means I can't easily store them the way I store the rest of my art pens. Right now they're laying flat on top of my watercolor markers, but that's going to get messy having them together in the same slot on my marker case, so I'm going to have to find a different spot to put six lonely long pens that I'll probably end up reaching for somewhat regularly in the future. <laughs> The Pilot Fineliner is a good pen. It's nothing particularly notable compared to other top quality pigment fineliners, but I do think the cap system is a very cool idea, and I wouldn't be opposed to getting more of these at some time, particularly if I can find them in sizes I don't normally get, or different colors. At £3.65 though, that works out to nearly $6 Canadian, so that's definitely on the pricey end for a single fineliner. The pencil is great. I love Stadler pencils. Those and Faber-Castell's drawing graphite pencils are my favorites. The Viking pencil I got in a scrawler box earlier this year is probably next in line for favorites. I do have a regular full-range set of Stadler Mars Lumograph pencils from 8B to 2H plus F. And then I have a whole bunch of extra 2H pencils, since that's my preferred sketching lead. This one's a 4H, so that's a nice addition to the collection. As for the sketchbook, I'm really excited to get to try out paper from Claire Fontaine since I've been hearing a lot about their pastel matte papers in the last year. I don't think I'll actually try pastels on this though since it's tiny and a sketchbook which could get messy with a smudgeable medium. Whenever the water-based pens seemed to be chewing up this paper, it was only doing surface damage. I didn't come anywhere close to eating holes through a sheet at all. There is some ghosting on reverse sides of pages where alcohol ink and the blue chameleon pen were used, but no bleed through to the next sheet. Folding the cover open at first was awkward because it's just two staples holding it together and they're not placed very close to the ends of the spine, so the heavier cover wanted to crumple and bend in weird ways. Now that I've opened it a couple times, it's easy to crease the spine area of each new page and get it to lay flat, but it's it no longer closes nice and flat. Definitely a sketchbook for doodling, planning, and testing the paper, not a place to do finished works. Maybe it'll get some good use next month during Inktober. We shall see. Overall, I'm happy I got this box. I like all the supplies, I just don't like them together and for this prompt. I think these pens would have been an excellent choice back when they sent us a bullet journal themed box, and they also easily could have done a mandala or doodling themed box with these, rather than presenting them to us as a coloring tool. By the way, I'm going to be doing a Scrawler Box Is It Worth It review video in November, because November 1st is when my 12 month subscription renews, so it'll be the start of my second year long subscription with them, and depending on when I film, I will have already posted either my 19th or 20th Scrawler Box. I'm going to run through the cost and usual savings, show you all the supplies I've received from Scrawler Box overall and from a consecutive 12 month span, and probably do some art with as many of the supplies as I can. I'm hoping it'll be a lot of fun and perhaps a little more informative about art subscription boxes than just the snapshot that each of these individual unboxing videos give you. I'm not being sponsored by Scholar Box at all, though I'd love it if they see this and decide to sponsor me. <laughs> I do subscribe just like everyone else, I just really love this service in particular, and I've been having so much fun with art subscription boxes over the last two years. That video will cover every scholar box from April 2018 up to the October 2019 box, so feel free to leave a comment down below if you've got questions, or if you really want to see a particular item come back in the art piece that I do in that video. Thursday is going to be a one-off unboxing and review of the new Art Snacks Plus box. I found a coupon that made the first box in a new subscription a really great deal, so I started a new Plus monthly subscription just to get it, to try it out, but I won't be continuing at this time. Expensive, yada yada, come back for that. See you then!